Now that you have an overview of the grid under your belt, now it's time to see it working in the browser. This first demo will show you how simple it is to set up the IG grid with just a few JavaScript operations. So here's the grid running in the browser, being bound to a JSON array. You'll notice that the first column is a Boolean column and that renders out checkboxes. Another nice feature is that as you hover over different rows within the grid, it has a hover state so that you can see across the grid's rows the data that you're currently looking at. All right, let's drop down and take a look at the code. I'll spend a little bit of time in this first demo discussing the overall page setup and what's required in order to get this page up and running. All of the other demonstrations in this course use basically the same page template. So unless something is different from demo to demo, I'll just stick with the controls code. Starting at the top, you can see that it's got the HTML5 doc type. Then as we come down to the script references, I'm bringing in Modernizer, jQuery, and jQuery UI. Then the next script reference is for the Infragistics Ignite UI Loader. The benefits to using the loader are that as you define the capabilities for the grid, the loader component is what worries about bringing in the requisite JavaScript and CSS files that you'll need based off the capabilities you've declared for the grid. Now, since the grid ultimately exists as an HTML table in the markup, I'm declaring the container here as a table. You can sometimes use a div if you want to, but as you begin working with the API of the grid, you may run into some problems. So I recommend that anytime you're working with IG Grid, always start off with the base element as a table. Now down here is where the setup for the loader is done. The first thing I need to do is tell it the script path. This is the location where it will find the JavaScript files for Ignite UI. In this case, I have a virtual directory set up off of localhost, and from there, in the JS folder, is where all the files are found. The same is for the CSS path. I'm using a virtual directory and then going to the CSS folder. Now for this demo, the only resource that I need is IG Grid. So as I declare IG Grid here, this is telling the loader that it needs to go out and fetch the JavaScript and CSS files that are required for the basic functionality of the IG Grid. Now once all of those files are loaded and it's ready to begin working with the page, I can run this anonymous function off the loader. Now for the first few demos here, I'm just using this inline data so you can get an idea of what's being pumped into the grid. So I'm declaring a local variable, and this is a JSON array. So each one of the records here has an ID, name, date of hire, age, salary, state, and a Boolean item of is active. So this resembles the typical type of information that you might find in, say, a contacts or a customer's database. So here's the primary key value the person's name, when they were hired, and on and on. So this is done for three people that I'll show within the grid. So that's the data itself. Now within each one of these demos, I've put a link to the API documentation for the grid. This will be really helpful for you because as you download the code or follow along in this video, you can go through the API documentation and see all that's available if there's something I haven't covered here. The API documentation includes a wealth of information available to you. You'll notice here that this is for the base part of the grid itself. You can see that it shows the dependencies that are required for the grid. And then you can drill in and look at each one of the options of the grid, the events, the methods, and what's required in order to theme the grid. Now as I come into each one of the options, I can expand on them you can see that there's a small code snippet that you can copy and paste into your code to get started quickly using that option. And it shows you how to set that option as well as get its value. Lastly, you'll see the type and also the default value for that option. Events work in a similar manner. You have a code snippet here that shows you how to use the event, an explanation of the event arguments that are provided within that event, and it also tells you whether or not that event is cancelable. For methods, just as you'd expect, you get a code sample and then a little bit of an explanation about what happens when you run that method. Lastly, for theming, this tells you the class that's available on the grid and what it's used to style in the HTML elements. Okay, as we come back to the code, you can see that the first thing that I'm doing is creating a selector against the DOM and looking for the table that has the grid ID. So pound grid in order to select that table element. I'm declaring it as an IG grid, and then I'm passing in a number of different options. 
the first thing I'm doing is saying that auto generate columns is false. And the reason I want to do that is because I'd like to show you how to explicitly set up columns within the grid. Default column width is set to 180 pixels, and the data source is set to the JSON array that I have available up above. If you remember, it's declared right here. So if you're binding to a JSON array that comes as a result of a service, you can do it in a similar fashion. From there, I'm defining each one of the columns. The first one is the active column. The key in the data source is is active, and the data type is set to bool. The width is 60, and I'm telling it that I want it to format as a checkbox. Text fields require a little less setting up. So here I have my header text set as full name and the key of name coming from the data source. Date of hire, all I need to make sure to do here is say that the data type is date. And the same type of thing here with age, where data type is set to number. And then I bring the column width down a little bit, down to 60 pixels. For salary, I need to say that the data type is number, but then I want to format it as currency. And lastly, the state, its key is state, and I'm setting the data type as string. So once you have all the options defined, the work of setting up the grid is basically just running a selector and calling IGGrid. 